Hey, man. What's up? Uh, have you ever heard of BlackRock? BlackRock? Yeah. Um, I think it's called Obsidian, right? What is it called? What is that? What is Obsidian. that? Obsidian. <laughs> Obsidian. That's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, it's not. That yeah, they sell it as like a for for whatever reason. It's the really expensive thing at the gift shop. Yeah, because it's cool. It sounds cool. Obsidian. Obsidian sounds super. It neat. sounds valuable. Yeah, that's why I'm naming my kid Obsidian. <laughs> I want you to know that you sound valuable to me as my child. That's it. Yeah, I just want you to know you sound valuable. obsidian and then this is your brother absurdian <laughs> who is an absolute moron. <laughs> we hate him and um, absurdian. Hi, welcome to Jamba Juice, a uh, subsidiary of BlackRock. He talks about the power of sobbing. I don't even know what we were talking about. Why are we hearing reports that our money is just flying over the Pacific Northwest? <laughs> I'm just mad about Applebee's now. <laughs> to which someone in a super suit responded and said, are you in trouble? <laughs> Things I learned last night. An absurdian sounds like what you would call a comedian, you know, if he were like, you know, like, look, this guy's an absurdian. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Blackrock is a. An absurdian (laughs) sound. Okay. Blackrock is what? Blackrock is an investment firm. Okay. (laughs) An investment firm? Yeah, they're an investment firm. Okay. Um, I was going to say they sound like a sketchy company. Uh, the well, they, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what I was like. I was like, it sounds like a technology company that like went sideways or something, but yeah. like Black Mirror, yeah, but Black yeah, Rock yeah. is an investment company yep. that did some sketchy stuff. Yeah, they're an investment firm um, that's the largest in the world, and you've never heard of them. Uh, and there's Ooh. probably a reason for it because um, they're buying all the houses. Yeah, actually, for real. Yeah, we'll get to that. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, I knew some sketchy company was doing it. Black Rock. Yeah, so BlackRock, uh, uh, they are the largest investment firm in the world. Uh, they manage nine trillion dollars. Where they assets. based? Nine trillion dollars. Manage nine trillion dollars in assets, um, based out of New York, uh, uh, and you've never heard of them, which is kind of wild. Um, so they're under the radar. Yeah, they, they people um, they refer to it as the world's largest shadow bank, which is fair. Um, which we can talk about that in a second. Also, some people say they control the world because they control nine trillion dollars in assets, which is how much is there in assets? <laughs> <laughs> What's the total value of assets in the world? Earth value. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee there's a metric on it somewhere. Uh, uh, so the earth according to the University of California is worth five quadrillion dollars. Wow. <laughs> oh, but this one from Business Insiders, it's only 80 trillion. <laughs> so who do you trust? So they own a tenth of the world. <laughs> yeah. According to Business Insider. And according to Business Insider. Durr. Inside. Durr. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so they own a lot pretty much. Uh, well, they don't own that. They manage all that assets. They own okay. a lot of assets as well, but they manage nine trillion dollars in assets. Okay, okay, okay. Um, uh, their total their total asset value of their own company is one hundred sixty five billion dollars. Um, That's insane, but yeah, so they manage nine trillion. Uh, so uh, for a business like this, <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 For a business like this, we need an origin story. Uh, so let's let's talk about. Let's take it back. BlackRock was born in a small town in Texas, in the shadows of. Oh Texas. my gosh! I hope whenever I ask you where you're, like you know, not that I would ask you, I'll, I'll be there. But like <laughs> when someone's like, you know, where was your kid born? You'll go. <laughs> Their origin story is. <laughs> Ah! And they're like, bro, sorry, I asked. <laughs> like, oh, this is a sore topic for And Bree's just there, like, no, it's a bit he it's does. A, he thinks it's funny. Does she hate your bits? Oh, she hates them so much. Yeah, dude. I'm tired of dating girls that hate my bits. <laughs> <laughs> she hates my bits. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>
Hey, we should make a sketch show called uh, "Bit Off More Than You Can Chew." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh jeez, that got me good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ah! Oh, Tim's noises today are very odd to me. Go ahead. <laughs> the last one was like when you it's asked like, your grandma oh. to tell a story from the thirties. <laughs> She's like, oh, because oh, it used to be ah, and now she's old. So now it's like, oh. <laughs> so BlackRock, BlackRock founded uh, was founded by a guy named Larry Fink. Dude, I don't trust him already. Um, who he sounds like a guy who's like an art, like a manager for a, an actor in the 1930s. Yeah, actually, like, yeah. I am Larry Fink. I'm Larry Fink. Take a headshot. I do that radio voice a lot, like yeah. that old time You're radio. Pretty good at it. Yeah. Well, you know. Do you practice? Uh, <laughs> ah, <laughs> you know. So Larry, let me right tell you now, that. what I do in the shower is, uh, you know. Because some people sing in the shower. Yeah, I don't practice my radio voice. I'm pretty good at. It. I don't need to practice anymore. Okay. Uh, but right now, what I do is I just stand there and I'm just like watch, and then I just go. Previously on Big Brother, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I do. Over and over, like a lot. <laughs> You're in the or, shower. You'll or say it twenty like, times in one shower. Well, I'll do that, and then I'll just go. Uh, I'll also go. Um, who will win the power of veto and will it be used to save either sour Sarah Beth or Brittany? Find out Wednesday at eight seven central. Yeah, I mean you're you're getting better at that one. I'm right? getting better at yeah. it. You know, I'm practicing. Practice perfect. Yeah, well, are you utilizing your shower time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you using uh, your shower time like Gary V? <laughs> Who straight up just says like he pictures one of his family members getting shot in the face. <laughs> have you seen that clip? I have not. He, he talks about the power of sobbing. Oh god! And he says that it, it creates emotional health. And so he he's yeah. straight up like in an interview. He's doing his whole holding the mic thing aggressively, just like you know, like yeah. Every morning, every morning, I imagine one of my closest family members getting shot in the face, and then I just cry. No, you don't. <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't know. That sounds like you want to shoot your family like, members in the face. Sounds like you're a sociopath. <laughs> sounds like you're a murderer waiting yeah, to happen. Sounds like we should put you somewhere. Yeah, uh, Gary Vigilante. <laughs> Gary, very dangerous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Gary, Larry Fink. Larry Fink. He got to start in 1960s or 1976 uh, with a company called First Boston after he got a degree in politics. Um, and so he worked for this company called First Boston. It was an investment bank. Okay. Um, and uh, he eventually took control of their bond department. Uh, and while he was there, he created um, what's known as the mortgage backed security, uh, which is a very oh. famous um, yes. security and investing that worked out really well uh, yeah. in 2008. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that is the the backbone of the mortgage crisis in 2008. Um, he was the guy who invented that, um, but at the time people didn't know that was coming. And he yeah. was lauded as this hero of investing, and so he quickly rose to prominence in uh, the field. And he was. Um, Can you give us a rundown of what that like looks like? Yeah, so every time you walk in a room, they play John Cena's. No, song. I meant the. Can the you, doors can open, you tell the like, people? <laughs> I hate that I tried to interrupt you and you just push through. <laughs> Say John Travolta walks in. No, I said you walk in. You walk in a room and they play that every time you walk in. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Golly, dude. <laughs> he was like they're hiring John Travolta. <laughs> no, I'm uh of, of the mortgage ba- uh mortgage backed uh loans. Like, can you give a rundown of what how what did he invent? Yeah, so basically a mortgage backed security kind of bundles um, a bunch of uh, uh, debt or loans. Um, So mortgages were the biggest one and they were the most like valuable because they were seen as the safest. Yeah, Um, but people are going to pay them. Yeah, exactly. But I mean even things like student loans uh, just regular. So if you're a bank and you've got that money out, Mm -hmm. you can bundle it together, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, and then it goes into a pool and then 
um, investors could buy shares in that security. And so what it does is it kind of lets you leverage your loan as almost like a stock. And so then you can have other people yes. pay it. And so you have that money on hand and then the other people are still paying it back. Um, so um, it seemed much safer than a regular loan because you don't have the risk of, oh, it doesn't get paid back. It's going to get paid back. You're going to get the interest on it most likely because people almost always pay back their mortgages. Right. Um, and But you also can have people invest in that mortgage and then you make money off of it even more. <clears throat> and so it was revolutionary at the time um, and it, it rose him to this pom- prominence. Um, and uh, he eventually like at, earned First Boston a billion dollars. Um, so he was a very successful in the 80s. Yeah, in the 70s and early 80s. That's a lot of money for then. Mm -hmm. He was very, very successful in the bank until 1986 when um, he made a poor decision and he lost the company a hundred million dollars and he was ousted, lost his job um, and couldn't find another job in finance. He was like blacklisted because he lost a hundred million dollars. Yeah, he just misplace it. (laughs) Can you put this in the vault right there? And he's like, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. And then he he leaves the uh, like. Um, why are we hearing reports that our money is just flying over the Pacific Northwest <laughs> right now? <laughs> Cash flying That's, everywhere. It's not where I was gonna go with that. I was gonna go with. Uh, he gets called the next weekend into uh, his manager's office, and he's like, "Larry, uh, I have a question for you." And he's like, "Yeah." And he's like, um, "It's come to my attention from a, another source within the company." That after we gave you that briefcase with a hundred million dollars in it, big briefcase. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. But it's not though. It's just a check. <laughs> you know, it's just like it's a normal size brief. But it's not cash. Like we uh, we got a report from another employee that they saw you walking out of the office that day, and they said, and I quote, "He kicked open the doors, <laughs> and then he proceeded to yell." <laughs> To which someone <laughs> in a super suit responded and said, are you in trouble? <laughs> and then he said, no, I'm high on life. <laughs> Mutual combat. <laughs> you know? That's where Phoenix got it. He's like, he's like, wait, I can do that. Hmm. <laughs> so you've not only invented <laughs> he invented mortgage based securities, combat. but also <laughs> mutual combat. This guy's a revolutionary. <laughs> So he so he lost a hundred million dollars, got fired. Obviously, yeah. can't find another job because you go in the job and they're like, "Wow, that's really impressive." They're going down your resume, and you just put on there in text, "Lost a hundred million dollars." <laughs> like you just you put on there, uh, created mortgage-based securities, all this stuff, and they're just going to like, "Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, look at that. oh, oh." <laughs> hmm. We're sorry, Mister Fink. I don't think we have an opportunity for you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just there with his briefcase of money. <laughs> hey, does this it opens up the briefcase? Does this help? Like it's an empty briefcase. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just, just a large. <laughs> uh, sir, we can't do anything with that check. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, pretty much actually. Um, so uh, he calls up his friend, uh, 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 and they they buy into. A company called uh, Blackstone. They created this company called Blackstone. Okay. Um, and basically, uh, it was the company he worked for, um, but he did it himself. And so they took okay. out a five five million dollar line of credit, started this company, um, and uh, things are going great. Uh, except for uh, Larry has very uh, different systems he runs by. Um, the finance world operates a certain way. Larry operates a different way. Okay. Um, for example, he really believed that um, <clears throat> the people in the company, um, you need the best people in the world working in your company. And to do that, you need to incentivize them properly. So yeah. he would give away major shares in the company to new hires um, to incentivize them to work for them. Hey, if you come here, we'll give you 86% of the company. <laughs> Uh, if you can like, work here, the company's yours. <laughs> I mean, you can have it. You can seriously just take it. It's yours. Uh, yeah, so that's how I got hired. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened to me. That's how it became mine. <laughs> and now it is yours. Now it's yours. <laughs> so uh, 
uh, but that didn't go over well with the team. And after a couple of years of this, um, it basically got, became this thing where it was like, Hey, you got to stop. Like you can't keep, keep giving that away. Cause it got to the point where the company only owned 35%. Like yeah, the rest of it, the rest of the 75% was employees given off to employees. Uh, and so uh, the board was like, Hey, we can't do this anymore. He disagreed. There ended up being a lot of arguments between him and the other founder and he eventually buys everybody else out. And it's like, this is my company now and we're calling it black rock. Um, <laughs> He's like, yeah, we got to change this up. And they're like, what are you going to do? Black rock. <laughs> I'm like, okay, uh, it's the same. You know that, right? Uh, no, it's not the same. <laughs> All right. It's the difference between obsidian and absurdian. Okay, <laughs> which is very different. Uh, if you don't know, they're different words. All right, go ahead, Tim rock. <laughs> tillin' 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 Live from the Rhino in Kansas City Kansas City Monster trucks, ice cream, funny stuff You don't want to miss it Buy tickets, Dylan.com. <laughs> That'll work too Can we get a monster truck? Uh, maybe Okay, uh, so uh, they end up uh, investing. You should name your kid Corner. I hate that. I hate that. You hate that it's a good idea. I hate that because it's dumb. Yeah, just this is my kid Corner. Yeah, that's Cornerstone. Mm, I hate that. I hate that so much. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, they position themselves different than every other investor in the world, pretty much. The other option is to hyphenate their last name. You know, to be like Stone Rock. No, I was gonna be like stone pizza, like a like a stone. What do they call that? Stone oven. <laughs> stone oven pizza. Yeah. Stone make, oven pizza. Yeah. Black stone my kid. oven pizza. Corner stone oven pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oven pizza. This is you get it. You get it. We can toy with it. We can talk about it later. Yeah, we just have to meet someone with the last name oven pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People were like, "How did you come up with that last name?" Uh, it was. <laughs> It was a bit. It was a bit. Um, so they positioned themselves different than any other investment company because what they did is they said, "Hey, we're going to position ourselves in a place where instead of trying to maximize profits, we're going to go the opposite direction. We're going to say, hey, we're going to be ready for risk." And so they're at a point okay. where if something crazy happened, they're fine. Uh, is the way they set it up. They weren't so much like, "Hey, we're going to make a ton of money." They said we're going to make a lot of money and it's going to stay safe no matter what happens. Um, okay, and so they were really really big on risk. They develop um, uh, this on minimizing risk, minimizing risk. Yeah, because he yeah. lost a hundred million dollars one yeah, time. Like, that's that you'd think that'd be a priority. That was pretty bad. Yeah, he's like <laughs> that was that rough. Yeah, and so, so how do you do that then? <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I knew I would own it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, if you ask Larry. We're over here talking about stone oven pizza last names. I'm not a billionaire. So they had systems in place to be able to check um, all the possible scenarios for their clients, basically. Okay. And say, so here's all the possible scenarios. Here's our investment plan. We're going to kick out the ones that look like they're going to could potentially go that yeah. explode, and we're yeah. going to keep you in the stuff that is very low risk. Uh, and they would go to their clients and that was what they would offer them. They would say, hey, we're going to come do a risk assessment of your company and help change your portfolio accordingly. So that way when risky situations come you're you're fine and people paid them a lot of money to do that um, and uh, which meant in 2008 they were the only financial institution that was not harmed by the, the crisis because they were in a position really where so one, he created the thing that mm -hmm. caused the problem, mm -hmm. but he didn't suffer the consequences of that problem. Exactly, and it, because of two reasons. One, they were the only company that was set up internally to be able to withstand risk like that, a uh, 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 downfall like that. But also, when the downfall started, everybody came to him and were like, "Hey, how much money do we have to give you to fix this?" Um, and they just paid him a ton of money to yeah. go through their portfolio. They're like, "Hey, you made minimize, this thing." Yeah, including the U.S. government. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> the government came to Larry when they did their bailout and they said, hey, uh, BlackRock is going to put together our bailout program and they were like, we need you to figure out 
the most important institutions and we need you to craft this system to bail out all these banks. Um, because one, they're like, you're the only one that's not harmed. So you obviously know what you're doing Two, uh, we're the government. So we obviously don't know what we're doing. So it's a good max mi- mix match. Good match. <laughs> good match. Three, you came up with this idea that is exploding. So clearly you should know how to fix it. Um, and uh, uh, four, uh, I don't think that's a good logic though of like this was your idea. So you should also know how to fix it. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, I mean, it was my idea to bring wolves to the twelve-year-old birthday party, but I don't know how to. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I gotta get them out. That's ripping kids I got apart. Here. I don't know. I can't get them out That's, of here. You know, you know how hard it was to get them here. Yeah, yeah. I do. Do you know a wolf guy? Do you have a wolf guy? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something a youth pastor would ask, though. Yeah. Anybody got a wolf guy? Anybody got a wolf wolf guy in here? Um, so yeah, so the U.S. Um, basically gave. Um, BlackRock $130 billion to figure out the debt crisis. Um, some of which they got to keep, but most of which they had to allocate. Um, wow. The issue with this was it was a massive conflict of interest. If they paid me that much, I could probably figure it out. I could probably fix this. Well, no, the issue was this was a giant conflict of interest because who were their clients? The biggest financial institutions. You seem like in a smoker right now. Whatever is going on with your voice, oh, you got to take some cat. more. Is it my cat? Yeah. Because whatever reason, <laughs> you're just like, yeah, I mean, I think I have a hundred. I was like, bro, are you doing like a, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, so anyway, they gave him a. Huh. When we move into a new studio, I'm going to sound like a new man. I'm going to sound like a new man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk like this too so you don't feel as left out. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I got you the whole episode. Sweet. Appreciate okay, but imagine, you know how, uh, the, how grading this is on your brain right now? Yeah. Yeah, this is what I'm going through over here. <laughs> it's like the whole time you're just like, they gave him $130 billion. <laughs> Or you're like a lot of money, but like, you know, for that amount, I could figure it out. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's the, I'm just saying, try this, harder. This was be less allergic to cats. <laughs> <laughs> Pray it away, Lord. I come to you a sinner, and I humbly repent of my sins. Is that how you pray, dude? Uh, no, that's why you got fired from that church. <laughs> they were like, this guy prays weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, does he even know how to do this? They have to like submit an official document for the firing, and it's like. Speaking of though, why? praise weird, praise weird, <laughs> and they wrote it P R A P R A I S E weird <laughs> praise praise weird, and so I was like, wait, no, 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 I said he prays weird, and so I was like, that's what I wrote. <laughs> He's like, can't no, 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 like, <laughs> like he the way he prays. No, I hear you. I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I wrote the same P-R-A-I-S-E. thing. P R A I S E, praise and worship. <laughs> yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. I love praise and worships. I think. Uh, Hold on, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, what did you say? They talk about it in the book praise of Revelations. Wo- oh my gosh. This yeah. is one of my favorite psalm. Psalms. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Did you have another bit? Yeah, no, so, you know, someone was like, hey, where's the bathroom here? Well, those are our first, second, and third Johns over there. <laughs> so it wasn't a good one, but it's all right. All Over right, to the so book of James's. <laughs> third Corinthians. Uh, so uh, uh, that sounds better. We just had to laugh it out a little bit, you know? Speak from your diaphragm. So there was uh, oh, it's still $130 billion to allocate. Uh, across all these financial institutions. Okay. The issue was BlackRock managed. You can the tell funds Tim is done with a bit when he pushes through. Of, they <laughs> managed the funds <laughs> of all of these uh, <laughs> financial institutions. Yeah. So they basically got to decide what happens to all of them. What happens with the money? Who do we want to bail out? We're going to bail out who our do clients. We not wanna, yeah. So they yeah, just went yeah, and they yeah. gave the money to the people who were giving money yep. to them. We allocated. We, we, I mean, we did what the government told us to do. Exactly. We just happened to do it for all the people we already had an interest in. Yeah, and they said the government hired us because we know best and we know which yeah. of these are have the biggest impact. So then you get new clients because they're like, well, the government trusts them. Yeah, and so yeah, so they in 2009 they became the number one asset manager in the world. Wow. Uh, and at the time they were uh, 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 managing. Uh, Gosh, I think that's when they went over a trillion dollars in assets. Wow! Uh, uh, and so made them the, the largest in the world, massive, massive company, right? Yeah, and, and with the added fact that everyone else is tanking hard. Yes, exactly. Uh, wow. And so, 
So everybody starts coming to them and it's like, hey, we need you to to risk manage us. All of a sudden that became the all the rage. Did they do Black the did they do the, the 2008 bailout the same way they did the 2020 bailout stuff where they're just printing money? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so uh, uh, um, everybody came to them. We're like manage our risk portfolio or whatever uh, and they developed this uh, system called Aladdin, uh, which is a network of 5000 computers that basically did what they did before uh, Aladdin, but a computer does it. Yeah, and yeah. so it just manages which the is also company. the food company from our college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, it's both. It's got they two, do a lot of stuff. They operate in two verticals. Yeah, they know? were like, you know what we should get into college dining. <laughs> You know, Aladdin food service the people. They got to pay for it. You know, yeah. they can't not the students. So and I mean, the government's <laughs> paying for it. They so can't not, a lot. you know, <laughs> they can't. You can't. You can't have a school. That's a fire fest. You know, what if you got a fire festival <laughs> college edition? That sounds that sounds like <laughs> one of those like American pie movies. It, it does. Where like it fire does. festival college college fire fest university. Um, so uh, uh, they developed this Aladdin software and the software. It, this isn't like a, a, a streaming subscription where you're paying nine ninety nine a month. Yeah, this is a hundred and forty million dollar a year investment um, per company per company and companies are lining up uh, to get this Aladdin software to m- help them manage the risk. Um, we got to do. We got to get into this stuff, <laughs> which to me, I'm I'm going to go out on a limb. Let me go out on a limb. Yeah, if you're going to spend one hundred forty million dollars to pay a company to a year you be less risky. I would just say keep the hundred forty million dollars and make better choices. Yeah, but that's I mean like but when you're looking at the re- envelopes, but the <laughs> envelopes are so much cheaper. But I'm saying the revenue that they're doing. I mean, let's say that things fall apart. One hundred and forty million dollars that year in savings is not going to save them. Yeah, that's true for a lot of these companies. One hundred forty million dollars is a drop in the pan and so um, so yeah, so they they're exploding throughout the 2000s because what does Facebook make a day? Um, let's uh, take a look because I, I I remember whenever they got in trouble for boosting video views and stuff. Their fine was pretty big, but what is what's their revenue a day? Um, <laughs> 21.5 million 21 five. Yeah, they had to pay a ten million dollar fine. Oh, yeah, so it's like, and it's like, like oh, like they a, just give half a day's half a day? stuff. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, that's not bad. Uh, yeah, so they uh, um, they blew up in the 2010s, right? Um, and uh, guess what happened? Um, 2020, 2020, and oh. they, again, the only institution that is not harmed by the 2020 crisis in March. Well, I don't um, know. The PGA wasn't either, though. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? That they like still. Do you remember that the PGA took out pandemic insurance? In no. like 2003. Well, that's weird. Yeah, they were like, yeah, we're, well, because we George W. Bush was warning about it. George W. Bush was like, I guys, we are that. not prepared for a pandemic if it happens. So the PGA took out uh, pandemic, pandemic insurance. insurance. I, I looked this up how much they got out the PGA pandemic insurance because I think they paid. I think they got out like seventeen million dollars last <coughs> year. So I don't know. It may be way more than that actually, but I'm thinking about it. That might have been what they paid in. I'm not finding PGA. I'm finding Wimbledon. Oh, the tennis thing. Yeah. Did they do it then? Am I was I wrong about PGA? Yeah, was maybe, it Wimbledon? Maybe Wimbledon took out 141 million dollars last year. Yeah. Yes, that's what I'm thinking of. Then that's insane. It was one of the elites. Yeah, uh, sports. that's crazy. One of the superiors. Yeah, one of the better than us. Says. Yeah. That's like the added bonus of playing those games. Yeah, is that you can sit there and know there's people on the world who don't play this game, <laughs> and you say it like that too. And people are like, "Bro, we live in Arkansas. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> this course is closed eight months out of the year. Maybe calm down." You know, at Tillin, we're not just a podcast; we're a ministry, and our hope is to continue to reach more people with the light and the joy of the Lord. Because remember, at the center of all this. The core of who we are, our main objective is to fiddle off the devil. If you want to help support us in that ministry, please join us on Patreon where you'll get ad free episodes, exclusive merchandise, a Discord channel where we can discuss everything you want to talk about your dreams, your ideas, your problems. Text Till into 66866. <sighs> Do you feel that relief? 
Anyway, here's another advertisement. So, uh, in 2020, the crisis hits. They all they're, their companies survive. They're unaffected, and yeah, anybody who needed some help went to them, paid them more, and so they made a killing in 2020. Um, and it pushed them up to 9.5 trillion dollars in assets that they're managing, which is unbelievable. Um, now that's not money that they have, but they're right, right, right. They're managing, they're managing those, which things. is crazy. Uh, and so it's led a lot of people to start to point the finger at them and say, hey, this is a monopoly. Uh, these people control everything because they make the decisions on how money moves. And so this is part of why the GameStop thing was such a big deal because these were the people who before could decide what happens in the stock market. They could Got just it. say, hey, we're going to move this money to this fund and it's going to change everything in the market um, because they just had such an insane quantity that they were managing. They could run it. They don't own it, so they're not technically a monopoly. Technically, no. Yeah, and that's right. what's so complicated is, is that technically <laughs> what they're doing is allowed. Yeah, and they don't have a lot of as many checks and balances as a lot of institutions because they're not a bank. They're what's called a shadow bank. Mm. So they, they're not FDIC insured. They're not. They don't take deposits. They just manage funds and so which I was speaking of shadow banks. Did I tell you about the Starbucks shadow bank. Yeah. 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 Is that what it was? was are you, are you going to get to that? <clears throat> no, you can tell that. Oh, because the the money you put on a Starbucks card is then ex- you're exchanging your money for Starbucks credit money. Yeah. So if you've got fifteen dollars on your app, yeah, then you just gave Starbucks fifteen dollars that now they can take loans out as an asset. Yep. Yep. You know, so they have at any given time one point two billion dollars yep. on the app, on the app. and that they can take out loans and, and leverage that leverage. money and, yeah. and 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 move their shares. Yeah. As if that is part of their, it's crazy to me. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's they can clever. give out loans. They can do all that. You know, they can yeah, manage that money. That's it's ugh. really wild. Really yeah, wild. it's bonkers. Yeah, and so, so that's why every business is trying to do apps now. Yeah, they're so, like, know. oh, we can let's put uh, gift cards on apps. Gift cards on apps. Um, so yeah, so they. Uh, uh, um, you can order apps on our app. <laughs> That's Applebee's. Applebee's. Get the Applebee's, oh. right, guys? <laughs> I mean, hey, if your marketing team sees this, that's free. That's you know, yeah, free. You it's not free. It. It's you know, give me boneless wings, but you get it. <laughs> you don't want to go to Applebee's bring after this. Bring back our sauce. Bring you back. You want Applebee's? After bring back this. the sauce. The hot dry rub. Too bad the one next to me is just torn down. Have I ever read my Applebee's letter on the podcast? No, dang it! I'm so mad that you just brought that up. Why? Because I was going to insert line after line after line. Oh, from my. I've already done like two of them. Did you really? Yeah, and I was going to chop it all together and then put together the whole thing. It was going to be like me in different episodes, subtly reading. Your Have you entire, been doing this for a long time? Uh, I thought about the idea when you sent it to me, and then like I had thrown in some of them, and I kind of forgot for a little while, and then I threw in so like I was. Just, You've been dang sprinkling it. them in. Yeah, I might still do it. Wow. Yeah, because I've got it on my phone. I'm impressed. No, I feel no. like we have to give some context now. No. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you can. I, you know, hey, I'm really bummed about that. That's like if you. That's like if one day you were like, "Do I only have four fingers in this thumbnail?" <laughs> you know, that's like one of those things that I really thought was going to pay off in a little while. Dang Yikes! It. Yikes! Well, I'm sorry. That's okay. So tell about your Applebee's letter. Yeah. So uh, if, if you don't know, uh, Tim's obsessed with the. It was a buffalo. They did buffalo sauce and dry rub on it. Yeah. It was this like it was. So they had their hot, but their hot sauce, right? Right. But they had a, a sauce that was like it was their their buffalo, but they also dry rubbed it before they did. I don't know. Like it was crazy. It was awesome, um, and I loved it. Because uh-huh. we used to go to Applebee's a lot. Yeah, in college we were, we would go every week. We yeah, were in, we were there every week, like every Wednesday night. Yeah, that's how you and your apps. wife like got yeah, close. That's where we decided. They, to I mean, spend, that's where we decided to mace me. Did we decide at Applebee's? We decided at Applebee's, and we went and home we and did like, it. Well, we decided at Applebee's. And we're like, yeah, let's do. Because we used to sit in that Crescent booth, right? Mm-hmm. And it was it was funny because you know Tim and Bree started on opposite ends, and they just slowly, mm-hmm. you know, kind of. Looped around the moved, crescent. and then all of a sudden they were sitting next to each other, and we were all like, "Oh shoot!" I guess they're Is something uh, happening here. Are y'all touching mouths? You know, and um, I hate that. That's how I, that's how I ask people if they're dating. So, anyways, one day they took away. And we were like, "You all touching mouths?" And they were like, "Ah, no," you know. Um. All right. On Look March, how uncomfortable he is. On I'm March eighteenth, 
2018 at 8:58 p.m. What are you? T- I went to Applebee's and uh, I tried to order that those boneless wings. Um, this is after we moved. We're in Kansas City now, and I ordered those bath- those boneless wings. They're, sec- they're like, sorry, we don't have that sauce anymore, and I was crushed. Um, and so I ordered I don't know a burger or something random, something dumb. From and Applebee's. we're in a big group. We went with like a group from church. We're in a big group. And when and Tim gets I, mad, he, it's hard to hold it in for him. And you know? I pulled out my phone and on my notes app, I wrote a letter to Applebee's that I later sent to them. Um, and Will here's, you, here's here's what read it, it Dear Applebee's it is with a heavy heart today that I write you. I have been a faithful Applebee's customer for years. I watched as one by one. My friends and family began to bash Applebee's and turn their back on the bees, but I remained faithful and I defended you passionately a couple years ago. I started the hashtag save the bees to do my part in making Applebee's the Amazon of the restaurant industry. It didn't take off, but it's the thought that counts. But today the worst news was given to me. Your hot Buffalo sauce has been taken off the menu. This hot Buffalo sauce was unlike anything I've ever experienced. The dry rub that sits underneath the glorious sauce created a dry wet experience that could salivate the mouths of people for miles through thick and thin. This recipe has been there for me. I firmly believe that I never would have made it through my bachelor's degree if it weren't for the support that I received from your hot buffalo sauce. Today, a piece of me died. Today, only you own the, hold the power to resurrect that piece of me that desperately strives for new life. Applebee's, I love you. I always have. I've defended you when no one else has, and I intend to continue. But this, I don't know if I can get over this. I don't know if I could return to an Applebee's again. Our lives together will never be the same, but I hope, no, I pray that we, <laughs> that we can reach some sort of point of reconciliation and repair one of the most influential relationships in my life. Your biggest supporter, Tim Stone. Yeah, I can't believe you wrote that in our yearbook. <laughs> 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 I here's what I know is that their marketing department got to Dear Applebee's and then they just shut the email. <laughs> like they just closed it. They were like, all right. I got a reply that was literally like, it was like it was the canned response about the sauce. I was like, it was like thanks Tim, uh, uh, or thanks Tim for reaching out. Sometimes we are. As a quarterly, we assess how our menu items are doing, and sometimes menu items need to be taken off or added. They're like, keep checking back. Maybe someday it'll be back. And I was like, I emailed them back, and I was like, I'm, I will never. You email back. Keep checking back. I won't be. Dear Applebee's, <laughs> thank you for this thoughtful response. After prayerful consideration, I will probably not be joining. I know it's water, but please don't spit it on my carpet. <laughs> After prayerful consideration, I will not be returning to any of your locations. I will, however, email the store managers once a month <laughs> through my new Mailchimp account. I'm capped at two thousand for the free version. I am not willing to pay more. <laughs> so this is so. Please give me the contact info for all two thousand of your stores. I do believe this is the reason your business is is declining and you're closing your locations. This is what happens. Tim gets water in his mouth, and I just try to keep going. <laughs> Just try to keep going. <laughs> Me and my wife decided that we were going to get married here. <laughs> I almost proposed at Applebee's. That's why we relate to my proposal. Actually, hey, we're not bringing it up. <laughs> okay, fine. Let's talk. About I honestly about. thought they needed more time. That's why I did that. We I were dessert. That's all it was. That's okay, literally whatever. all it is. Yeah, and they're whatever. mad Fine. about it. I thought they needed more time. Oh, whatever, man. And you guys blame that girl I was with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was a period where I was just bringing girls on double dates with Tim and Bree to see if they would like one of them. Yeah, and they never did. <laughs> And like at this point, they've just been like Reagan's been around long enough. I guess I like guess. they just didn't like her either though. <laughs> At this point, we have to like her. So yeah. Um. So, anyways, I don't even remember what we were talking about. What is BlackRock? Uh. So yeah, they manage a lot of money. It's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just mad about Applebee's now. <laughs> no, they just have a lot of assets. They manage these companies. They uh, you know, they're a monopoly, but technically they're okay. Yeah. That's where we were. We got from apps to apps. Uh, there we right, go. That's right. So they're a shadow bank. They're a shadow bank. Here's the thing. Here's what happened in uh, uh, 2020 though. So uh, they 
BlackRock, the company, uh, <laughs> they saw what was going on in uh, um, China. No, the world. Oh. And they said, hey, uh, the housing market right now um, is wild. Oh, and yeah. So They're like, this is a safe bet. They just bought all the houses as many they're going in like 20 30 percent over aren't they <laughs> yeah they're coming in way over they're going in these bidding wars that normal people can never win with them right um, and they're just yeah they're coming in with they're out bidding on homes over. and then that way they're going to try to resell them mm-hmm. um, or I don't think they're gonna rent them. I don't I doubt that I doubt yeah. it. I think it's, it's I think they're just gonna hold on to them and sell it, yeah. them um, and so they, that dream house that you got outbid on and then not you, but I'm saying like if you were going mm-hmm. for a house, you got outbid on it, and then like three months later you drive by and still no one lives there. Yeah, like, I don't understand. It's because an investment company bought it. Yeah, like for example, there was a new housing development that went up in a town called Conroe, Texas, um, and it's a Conroe, bunch of Conroe, but okay, <laughs> Conroe. Uh, it's in Houston. Uh, a bunch of buyers were touring the homes, like looking for making offers. Yeah. BlackRock bought every single house in the housing development. It's an empty <sighs> housing development because they own all the houses um, and they're doing this across the country. They're just buying as many houses as they can um, and a bunch of people are up in arms about it um, because well, saying, yeah, <clears throat> because saying, then all we're doing is sitting on it and expecting to make a profit on it. So they're going to sell it for more. Mm-hmm. So yeah. then you go in, they're coming in and outbidding you by 10, 20% mm-hmm. and then later they're going to list it for 30% higher mm-hmm. than what your original bid was mm-hmm. exactly. And the thing is uh, there's a housing shortage. We're right never going to own homes. Well, <laughs> you do, but like, I'm never going to own a home. <laughs> uh, so there's there's a housing shortage right now. And yeah. a lot of people are pointing to the value. Your to house say has it's, gone up. it's their fault. They're saying BlackRock bought all the houses. That's why there's a shortage and yeah. people can't get houses because that's why I'm trying to buy them. some old Applebee's as they're closing. <laughs> what <laughs> if we lived in an old Applebee's together? What if we started in Applebee's? What if what if we wait until Applebee's a company goes under and we open a place called Applebee's kind of like the blockbuster. <laughs> it's it, not affiliated, but it's a, you know, <laughs> it only sells and we're the hop of we're <laughs> the last Applebee's. <laughs> we are your last Applebee's. I mean, I, I would that would be the Apple best that would touch my heart. Man, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I should have read that letter. I'm like sad right now. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> Uh, so anyways, uh, Larry Fink uh, uh, is once again, he's restored his reputation that money he's lost. Uh, he's made way more for companies yeah. time and time again over and over uh, the government again in 2020 went to him when it was time to do a bailout. <laughs> so he orchestrated the bailout Larry. <laughs> <laughs> he just picks it up. Um, uh, that is a lot of influence if the government trusts you to do that stuff. I mean like you you then have influence over politicians. Yeah, and listen to this. They bought up. They bought up or bought up or merged with uh, a ton of companies. And like if you go to a politician and they're like, "Well, I don't want to do your bidding." And then Larry Fink is like, "Well, I own every house in your district." So So, if you want a house. Well, no, politicians don't live in their districts. So I mean, if you want a house. Uh so uh, they bought up uh, a ton of companies. Uh some you I probably just, heard of like, I'm saying he could force all the tenants out. He could be like, You don't uh, have anybody you have in your no district. district. There's yeah. nobody in your district. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> your district is a ghost town. That's fair. Uh, uh, they've bought up a lot of companies that you probably heard of, like Merrill Lynch, uh, Barclays. Um, let's see, what's another one you probably heard? Uh, Citibank Amex, Jamba uh, Juice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, welcome to Jamba Juice, uh, a subsidiary of BlackRock. BlackRock. Uh, but you can't say that. Don't don't repeat that. Uh, what can I get you today? <laughs> hey, thanks for coming into Jamba Juice. We got a special on this, and also, um, do you own a home that you'd like to sell? <laughs> <laughs> Here's your juice, sir. Uh, remember, it's the only juice that'll survive a debt crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Jamba Juice open the whole time. <laughs> twenty twenty, they didn't close at all. Yeah, we can survive anything. Not a coincidence. We're like cockroaches, but like not <laughs> like, <laughs> like in a nice way. Like if cockroaches were fruity and cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is just great. I'm glad that your laugh's not a, a f- impacted by your cat allergies. Thanks. Uh, so recently, 
uh, they have been rebranding themselves. Yeah, uh, because they've been trying to be like we're friendly. Yeah, they own the world. Uh, and yeah. they want people to be happy about. We're it. not the bad guys. Uh, and so uh, they've had uh, some people who have been like, "Hey, uh, you, uh, uh, the, your investments uh, amounts to nine point five gigatons of CO two emissions in the world, uh, which is thirty percent of the total energy emissions in the world." Is BlackRock um, and companies that they're invested in, right, 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 uh, and so uh, they uh, uh, joined uh, uh, an environmental group uh, and they started trying to improve their ESG score, uh, which is their environmental impact and social justice yeah. concerns, things like this. And so they're now apparently shifting away from all of their like coil, coal, coal, coil, coil, and oil. <laughs> <laughs> Old and coil, <laughs> old and coil, uh, production companies uh, to try to have a better score in these things. Uh, it's a publicity stunt. Is yeah, what it yeah, is. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's pretty obvious. Merrill Lynch obviously. is the investment group that Bank of America uses, though. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. And, and that's the thing. They, and they're pretty. They're everywhere. <clears throat> they uh, they manage or own a lot of the major banks in the world. Yeah. Um. And so it's like. Uh, it really is. It really is one of these weird things where it's like this. These guys are pulling the strings like at least they own my car at least the economy. They are deciding how the economy runs um, and it's a little sketchy and so a lot of people are saying hey, we need to deal with these guys um, and obviously those guys are saying hey, we're fine. I mean, we know what we're doing. We're okay. We do things well. We've only ever lost a hundred million dollars ever <laughs> <laughs> ever. Yeah, just a hundred million dollars. We also we invented the subprime mortgage, which I mean was name bad one for thing, everyone else. Name one thing that everybody knows more than that. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, we were bigger than the Beatles. we've rebranded the subprime mortgage, <laughs> you know, and if we can come back from that, <laughs> think of what we can do for your company. <laughs> that's the pitch. <laughs> that's their pitch. Yeah, so uh, 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 Larry Fink and BlackRock a little sketchy. You've never heard of them and that should worry you, um, <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, uh, he started his career. Larry started his career with the, you know that stuff. I don't want to do it again. Well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to hit it three oh, times. Then, and then, yeah, I, I got it. I got it. I got it. He started with a very extravagant, you know, yeah, yeah. boasting kind of thing, mm-hmm. and then went more quiet. Yeah, today he is, Today there's a direct quote going around of him, as he's like, he's like, he's like, I'm a humble man. He's like, I want everyone to know. He's like, I'm the same turd I was 30 years ago. <laughs> Uh, and I think that's exactly how it's going to go when uh, he rides off into the sunset. He's going to turn his way into his fiddle off. Hey, thanks for watching things on last night. If you like this video, we have others you can watch or we have highlights some of our favorite moments from shows. Please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future episodes and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week on Things I Learned Last Night. <laughs>